When we need to feed the wire through, first of all we take off our front parts so we have no restriction to wire feed. The 255 has a unique feature that it doesn't have an inch button. So when we want to feed the wire through, we just pull the trigger, we hold it for five seconds, one, two, three, four, five, and then it'll increase and feed our wire through at a reasonable pace. So I'm going to put the wheels down, give it a bit of tension, put it on the trigger, and it'll feed the wire through for me. Once the wire is through, we check that we have the correct type and wire size tip. And we'll put that on. We put our nozzle on. We then release our rollers. Go back to our gas bottle. Set our gas bottle by pulling the trigger. We turn the gas bottle on carefully. Not putting our face in the road of it. We pull the trigger and we will set the ball between 15 and 20 litres per minute. Once that's set, we're ready to weld. We're going to talk about the Strata MIG 255C. The 255C has come out with a revolutionary new front panel on it. It can be both as simple or as complicated as you like. At the moment, it is set into MIG manual mode. And when you're in MIG manual mode, you just have the two dials. One where you're dialing the wire speed up, and the other one is voltage. And this is just as a normal MIG would be for its normal setup. It gives you all the information still hidden on the screen. It says we're in MIG manual, and all the details of 2T, uh, start current, inductance, soft start, all along the bottom here, giving you all the information you want to do. The rest is in behind on other screens. The next thing we're going to do is talk about the screens that are in behind. At the moment we're set in manual mode. Now manual mode means that we can adjust each individual item, the wire speed and the voltage by the two knobs here. And this the third knob doesn't do anything. This is just like a normal mix setup and we can do anything in behind there. If we want to go into another mode we can push the home button scroll through our modes, mix synergic, spool gun, settings, so on. So I have selected manual, mic, so now I can push the button and it will ask me whether I want 2T or 4T. I can select the button, 2T, 4T. I'm going to select 2T. Once I've selected that, I can push the home button and it will go back to home. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put it into synergic mode. Synergic mode means that the machine will do all the thinking for you. All you have to do is set the thickness of material and the machine will give you a suitable um, result and voltage and wire speed and amperage to match that. So I've selected mix synergic. I will now select it by pushing the center button. It asks me what material I want to use. In this case there's steel, stainless steel, flux cord, aluminium, silicon bronze. So we'll go to steel. Select it by pushing the knob. It's going to ask me whether I'm going to use CO2 or argon's mix. So I'm going to go CO2. I select it. It asks me what size wire. So just scroll through and I'm going to select 0.9 wire. Now I've selected all those parameters. All I have to do is adjust the thickness by turning this knob here and you can see that there's a material thickness in the middle is going up my voltage and wire speed are going up accordingly and this will change as the metal gets thicker or gets thinner so we can adjust it and it will do all the thinking for you if you want to do a bit of fine adjustment or you think the settings aren't quite right for your style of welding we have a little voltage control mechanism here and we can adjust the synergic voltage 
which is its nominal voltage is zero, or we can add a little bit more voltage to make the world a little bit hotter. We can take it back to zero, and we can go down if you think the puddle's a little bit too hot and we want to cool the puddle down. That will hold that right through the thickness range as we go up, or we go down. Now to go back to our normal programs or set the parameters in behind, we can go back to the home button and select again what we want to do. The Strata 255 has some background parameters that we need to set to get the welding going as we want to. The easiest way to do that is to go to the stiddle button here on the right hand side. We push that and we bring up the stiddle screen. And we can scroll through the parameters we want and then set them to what we want to do. So the first one we've got here is 2T4T. I can highlight that, push the button, select it. 2T, 4T, back to 2T. When we're finished setting that parameter, we can push the button and we can go on to the next one, which is burn back. Select it. Now burn back controls the wire, how far it burns back towards the tip when the welding is finished. It goes from zero to 10, I'd set it at around about 3 as a good starting position. Now I've set that parameter, I push the button again, go on to the next one. The next one is soft start. This allows the wire to come out slowly. Once the arc is initiated, it then carries on up to full welding speed. It just gives a better start. It goes again from 0 to 10. Again, a good starting point is around about 2. Finish with that parameter, we then Go back and we step on to the next one. The next one we scroll to is pre-flow. I've selected it. Pre-flow just allows a bit of gas to come out before we start the arc to protect the end of the wire and to give us a good start at the whirlpool. Again, 0.3 of a second is a good starting point for this. I go back, I select it. This one here is post-flow. This one here allows the gas to carry on after the weld is finished just to protect the wire from oxidizing, which relates to a good start next time we want to start the wire. Half a second is a pretty good starting point. The last one I've got on here is inductance. Inductance controls the wire explosion when the wire touches the job. If we want a harsh explosion, we can set it down to zero, and that will give us a really hard, tight arc. If we want a softer arc, we can go up to the higher end, which is 10. 10 will give us a very, very soft arc. Uh, a good starting point is around about 5, and then you personalise what you want from there. To get back when you're finished, we push the home screen, select what we want, and we're back to where we want to go. The Advanced MIG 255C has the ability to store and recall job setting. So you can set it up for a job in your workshop and once you've got it set you can memorize the job and then recall it. To get into this function there's the word save up in this little corner and the word recall up on this side. So what we do to save a job, like I've got 20 volts and 9.3 millimeters uh, per minute wire speed, I can push that and hold the button, keep it held, keep it held and then it gives us a 10 folders which we can store the information in. So in this case I'll put in 3 and then select it by pushing the center button and that is now saved it into that particular folder. If I want to recall that job I can hold the right hand button down and then I can go into 3 and select and as you can see it comes up with the last set of parameters that I've stored in that folder. This is a very handy um, thing to be able to do because it means that you can select your favorite jobs with your favorite settings and you can get it back to that anytime you want to set it up correctly to do that particular job. The next mode I'm going to explain on the Advanced MIG 255C is the arc welding mode. So to get into the arc welding mode we lift the hood up, we push the home button and I go through to the stick welding mode, I push the button 
it asks me for a, a hot start that I want to set. So I can select the hot start and I'm going to select that as three. Now the hot start is the amount of energy we're going to reach out and grab over and above our normal setting to get the electrode going. So I've now selected that. The next one I'm going to uh, set up is arc force. Now arc force is often called dig and this comes into play when you're pushing the electrode in and it wants to go out it will reach out and help you with more energy to stop that electrode from going out. Once I've selected my perimeter I'm going to push the button. I've set them both. I can now push the home button. We're still in MIGMA, uh, arc welding mode. I've set it 200 amps. So I will adjust my amperage down to the setting I want, in this case 125. This one here is giving me the voltage, which tells me that we have our VRD on. My open circuit voltage is 14.6. So when I strike my arc and start welding, that will go up to what we call open circuit voltage on this machine is 70 volts. So now we need to disconnect the MIG handpiece. Releasing the wire. We use a screw type electrode holder and it has a little drawer in it. We open the drawer by holding onto the top and screwing the bottom, putting our electrode in there and then tightening it up. Make sure it's nice and tight. I bend it for comfort. We've set our welding parameters and we're ready to go arc welding. The Vance MiG-255 has the ability to take a spool gun. When we're working with aluminium, especially when you're doing jobbing or building small things in aluminium, the spool gun is certainly the way to go rather than trying to push it down a handpiece with a special liner. That is a whole video on its own, but roughly the spool gun can fit into our Euro connection, it fits into our plug, and we go up to our home screen, we select the spool gun mode, Select the parameters in behind, and we're now ready to run our spool gun. See our other videos as a follow-up to the Strata 255 to how to use a spool gun. The Advanced MiG-255 has the option of DCT. DCT will do our mild steel, our stainless steel, and our chrome mollies. It will not do alloy. Now, when we set up a TIG, we have to buy the optional TIG torch, and the torch goes into the negative side, always into the negative side. We put that into there. We put our plug in. To select our TIG mode, we have to go into our home screen and select Lift Arc TIG. We select it. It asks me whether I want to go into 2T, 4T, so I'll push that. I like 2T, so I'll leave it into 2T. Push my perimeter back button, post flow. This will give me a time at the end of the well to let the gas flow so my tungsten doesn't oxidize and it should be roughly one second per 10 amps so I'll set that at around about seven and last is downslope downslope is used to fill up the little pinhole when we stop welding you hold the torch there and the amperage will wind down once these parameters are set we push our home button we push our select button and we're ready to go